Hello, I'm Eric Rano, and this is a video for tipsquirrel.com, the free website for everything Photoshop. In this video, we're going to look at this shattered effect and how a simple technique can be used in different ways. So let's jump into Photoshop and see how it's done. So here I am in Photoshop and I've got my image all ready to go. I've gone over to Photolia for this image. There's details up on the screen. Now, what I'm going to do here is, first of all, create a very simple effect. I'm going to zoom out just a little bit by pressing Control or Command and minus. And then I'm going to go ahead and get the lasso tool. Now, I'm using a graphics pen. If you're not using a pen, then you might be able to do this with a mouse. If not, then have a go with the polygonal lasso tool. What I'm going to do, I'm going to zoom out just a little bit further. I'm going to start outside of my image and then just start scribbling across something like this. Now, I'm not going to go over myself too often. In fact, I think I've messed that one up. Let's try that again. Control D. And I'll try not to go over myself too many times and go from one side of the image to the other the best I can. Now, when I'm finished, I'm going to come up and around and then join it back up the top. There we go. Just so I don't get a line going through my image. And there is a random selection. So all I need to do now is to go over to my layer with my image on it and press Control or Command J. And that's going to jump or duplicate only the parts that were selected onto a new layer. And we can see that by turning off that layer there. Now to give this a bit of a shattered effect, with this layer selected, I'm going to go to the Move tool. And then I'm going to press the Shift key and use the up arrow, and I'm going to press it about six times. So with shift pressed down, one, two, three, four, five, six. And then I'm going to press the left arrow six times too, with the shift pressed down. One, two, three, four, five, six. A shift key just makes it in increments of 10 pixels rather than a single pixel. So there you can see I've got my shattered effect. Now I've got a little bit too much there. Beauty about this is I can just throw it away and do it again. So let's do that one more time, starting outside and come along and scribble away. Don't go over myself too much if I can help it. There we go. Back around and that's looking a little bit better. Control or Command J, Move tool and then Shift and up. One, two, three, four, five, six. Shift and left. One, two, three, four, five, six. And that's a much better effect. I like that one a lot more. So there we go. Now I could uh, add layer styles to that if I wish, but I'm going to keep it as it is for now. I'm going to use a very similar effect. I'm going to turn that off for now. A very similar effect. This time I'm going to use the rectangular marquee. Let's control or command zero to bring it back full screen. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to pick out some of the features. So I'm going to pick out an eye there. Now I want to add to this selection. So I press down the shift and I get the plus next to my cross there. And I can then go ahead and start adding to this. Now I'm trying to make them as random looking as possible. There we go. Let's do one across there. And then his ears. So I'm picking out the main features first. Ear there and a mouth. There we are. And a chin and maybe some sideburns and bit of the beard as well. With the forehead, I'm going to do that as several selections, not just one selection across his forehead. There we go. Something like that. There we go. And then the same for his hair as well, rather than do it in one big bit, try and do it in several little ones. Anyway, so I'm not being too careful. I'm just trying to select little bits of it to give us a representation. There we go. I'm going to come in here and just do bits on his cheek there, just so we get a little bit of that. Okay, let's put one in there as well, maybe two in there. There we are. Okay, now I'm going to do some on his t shirt here purely because of the way this effect works, and we may want to add some layer styles to this. And without boxes down here, of course, we wouldn't get our effect showing. So let's do that while we're here very quickly. I'm trying to talk so it's not too boring while I'm doing this, but it's making it a bit difficult. There we go. We'll go there. All right. I've just seen a whacking great big gap here. So let's do a, a square in there. Just the same as I did before, back onto my original layer, Control or Command J to jump or duplicate. I'm going to rename this one squares just so I know where I'm at. And I'm going to call this one, let's call this one scribble or something like that, scribble. So back on my square layer. 
get my move tool and again shift and up arrow one two three four five six and the left arrow one two three four five six now how many times you do that it will depend on the resolution of your image and how you want it to look of course for me this might be a little bit too much in this instance but we'll carry on and see how we get on now to distinguish the foreground from the background what i'm going to do is come down to my original layer here and then add a black and white adjustment layer it's a little bit too much and it causes a bit too much of a contrast for my liking so i'm going to reduce the opacity of that i'm going to bring the opacity down to around about 25 percent in fact just to give a little bit of color back in okay now what I want to do is actually give that a little bit of texture too. So up here, I've got a texture layer. Again, I've gone to Photolia for that. I'm going to select all and then edit and copy. Whoops, not cut, edit and copy. And then go back to my original image and edit and paste. Need to transform that. So edit and free transform. And then just bring these around. I want the grain to run the same way as it's his face there. I'm holding shift then just to constrain the rotation. So I've got it nice and straight. Let's bring that down. And there we go. I'm going to click the tick and change the blend mode of that to my favorite soft light. Let's see how that looks. I've got a quite a nice grungy effect going on already. I'm going to add some contrast. So back onto my original layer and another adjustment layer, this time selective color. And what I'm going to do here is go into the blacks. I'm going to uh, Maybe lighten those a little bit or add more black rather just darkening those off and the neutrals let's darken those off a little bit too and then the whites let's go down there a little bit just to add some contrast so now uh, we've got a little bit of grunge going on there as well on my squares layer let's see if we can't add a little bit of layer styles to that so i'm going to add a drop shadow oops a little bit too much there Let's use the mouse just to bring those back in. Here we go. Like so, maybe. I've gone too far. Let's bring that back in. There we go. And then we could, if we want to, put some stroke around it just to make it look like it was uh, photographs as well, if we wish. I kind of like that. That's looking good. I'm going to click OK. So now we've got uh, this one and we've got this one. Let's do one more. This time I'm going to do it in strips. So this time what I need to do is to have black and white strips so as I can select them. It's a very easy way to do that. If we reset the color swatches over here to black and white, then I'm going to go and create a new layer right on the top. I'm going to make a gradient running black to white and just draw that on. Hold shift down to constrain into a straight line. There we go. So I've got my black to white and then go to filter and distort and wave. Now, if I have this on square and I've got my number of generators up around the 50 and my wavelength to around about 236, 237 ish, my amplitude all the way up, you can see that I get these straight lines. That's exactly what I want. Now, if I change the wavelength, you'll see that I can add or delete more lines as well. So depending on how you want it to look really. Like that's going to be about right for me. I'm going to click OK. Black and white lines. To select these, all I need to do is go to my channels, choose any one, red, green or blue, press the control or command, hover over one of the thumbnails and click. Go back to my layers. I can actually throw that away now. Don't need it. But there's our selections. So back onto my original image. Control or command J. To duplicate it, let's bring that up to the top of the stack somewhere. There we go. We'll call this one lines. Here we go. And let's shift those ones across. So with the move tool, we can shift this with the shift and the mouse keys. There we go. This time I've just gone three this time. Four, five, four, five. Something like that will do nicely. Now with this effect, it might be nice just to bring it down underneath all the uh, adjustments there. So it gets the same effect as the background, just so we get something a little bit different. So there we go. Don't forget to like this if it was useful. And of course, subscribe to this channel for more Photoshop and Lightroom tutorials. And join me over at tipsquirrel.com for even more. Until next time, bye-bye for now.